Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. If you thought last year's construction season was tough, wait until you get a load of what's coming on I-94 near Novi and Wixom. It's going to be gridlock on top of gridlock as they look to rebuild bridges and the highway. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm Kimberly Gill. And I'm Devon Fernandez in for Devin Skillion tonight. Now, the construction will put four lanes of traffic on one side of the road rebuilt last summer and fall. Local 4's Rod Maloney is in Novi right now with more on the immediate problems this is going to cause. Well, aside from the weather, take a look behind me here. There's the sign, the I East 96 ramp closed, okay? And you can expect that to go all up and down this entire corridor. It starts tonight and into tomorrow morning. It's confusing to sort it all out. But here's one thing you need to know. It's going to be a mess out here until fall. Just how bad is the construction and traffic out here? It's horrible, man. I work literally like a half a mile from here. Eric Krajicic says the road closures and construction along Beck have made Wixom and Novi traffic nightmares. And I feel like they're getting ready to close it down at the worst time again, and it's just it just sucks that we're going to have to go through this for the second year in a row. How inconvenient is it? Beyond. And he's right about that. Starts tonight through 5 a.m. tomorrow. The northbound I-275 ramp to westbound I-96, along with the westbound M5 ramp to westbound I-96, will close. You can expect after 5 a.m. lane closures on the ramps there, too. Then starting at 5 a.m. tomorrow to 2 p.m., the westbound I-96 traffic shifts to eastbound lanes from I-275 to Kent Lake Road. They'll open two lanes in each direction, riding on the new road surface installed last summer. Also at 5 a.m. tomorrow through late fall, the southbound M5 ramp to westbound I-96 closes the detour Grand River. Northbound and southbound Novi Road ramps to westbound I-96 will be closed again. Grand River, your detour, and the westbound I-96 ramp to Novi Road will also close. They're rebuilding ramps, repairing pavement, improving the Beck Road carpool lot, and repairing nearly a dozen bridges. MDOT is also hurting business at Zach's Car Wash, says Dylan Dean. I mean, it slows it down a lot because all the traffic's sitting here and it brings us the numbers down halfway. You know, I wish, you know, it'd pick up, but, you know, if they can get through, they'll be able to, you know. Yeah. But it's just hard. People don't like to sit in traffic, you know what I mean? Now, there is a lot to take in here. The bouncing ball is very difficult to follow. But go to clickondetroit.com. We have the MDOT information on all of this, so you can find it there. We discovered ourselves one problem, southbound telegraph, trying to get on the lodge southbound and go downtown to the station. That's closed, too. So that whole corridor there, 696, I-96, in that whole sort of northwest section of Metro Detroit, it's going to be a mess for the time to come. Back to you. Oh, man, Rod, you know, is MDOT offering anything in the way of relief for this project? You know what? Look, MDOT has a tough job, and they do catch a lot of heat, but this is what they said about this. Remember last year when you were driving, you know, they had four lanes going to each direction on the bad pavement, and you'd be doing this while you were going <laughs> with the Jersey barriers right there. You remember mm -hmm. that? Well, they said this year, because we're going to be riding on the good side of the road, we won't be doing this anymore just this. <laughs> that is some relief, I guess. We take it how we can get it. All right, I thanks, guess. Rod. <laughs> thanks, Rod. All right, Rod, we appreciate it. All right, one man is dead after a shooting by Warren Police. It happened this afternoon during a domestic violence complaint in the area of Ryan Road and Garber Drive. Investigators say the man was assaulting relatives when officers got there. They found someone armed with a gun and shot him. He died at the hospital. An investigation is ongoing. All right, time now for a check of the weather as uh, the rain and the wind move through southeast Michigan today. Yeah, Ron Hillier is in for Kim Adams tonight. And Ron, there's still a few hours left in that wind advisory. Come on, Kimberly, that advisory expires at midnight. But even after that, it'll still be breezy out there. Just below, though, the criteria for an advisory. We're looking at the Detroit River in the background. You can see those waves out there. The temperatures right around 50 degrees in southeast Michigan. They range from the mid-40s with 46 in Lapeer and Sandusky, as well as in Port Huron to 52 degrees in Detroit from Coleman Young Municipal Airport. The Zach Track 40 radar showing that the rain showers are all across our area, but they are going to be winding down this 
evening. You can see some of that more moderate rainfall with the darker green colors as you get into places such as Lapeer County, into Seneca County, and even into St. Clair County. You can see that right along I-69 and northward. Now, what we have in store for us, after we get the rain moving out, those clouds start diminishing a little bit later as well. You see some of that clearing happening on the west side of the state over toward Grand Rapids and Muskegon. We will see this wrapping up, see the clearing later on tonight. So for now, we have the showers tapering off tonight. Those winds will still be gusty over the weekend, even beyond and after the advisory. And then this weekend, we have sunshine to look forward to, but there's also still a chance of rain in the forecast that's coming up. OK, Ron, keeping families safe. That's the mission from the state with a new program for free gun locks. Yeah, Sean Lake shows us the move will help gun owners comply with the new secure gun storage law. Take a look. The state has bought 75,000 of these gun locks. They want to secure 75,000 firearms inside Michigan homes. 75,000. That's just the start. MDHHS has offices in every county of the state, multiple offices in some counties like Wayne County. Just come in, we have the gun locks available, ask for one and you'll be able to get one. Elizabeth Hertel is the director of the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, a vital organization that works to help families with health, food, and now protecting children from the epidemic of unsecured guns in homes. We continue to see the tragedies. An unsecured firearm at a home, a child gets it and is shot, or another child is shot. The state's new safe storage gun law requiring owners to secure their guns is now in effect. MDHHS and MSP making it easy and free to lock up a gun. Having something as simple as a gun lock to prevent children from being able to use those handguns will save lives across the state. And so we're really excited to be able to take on this partnership. Oakland County Prosecutor Karen McDonald hammering home how easy it is to use a gun lock in the James Crumley trial. A locked gun would have prevented the Oxford school shooting. Safety is paramount, um, very critical in a household. You need to keep your gun secure. Um, I, we all understand there's, we have a Second Amendment right in through the Constitution, but you also have a, gun, a, a role and responsibility as a gun owner to properly secure it. It's worth repeating, the gun locks are absolutely free. You can get them at any Michigan Department of Health and Human Services office or any MSP post. Again, absolutely free. The state wants you to come get them. Sean Lake, Local 4. Well, the city of Detroit marks a five-year milestone for affordable housing. The new residential development along East Jefferson Avenue pushes the city's affordable housing investments past $1 billion. The East Jefferson $45 million riverfront development offers 20 units for residents earning 30% or less than the area's median income. The new developments will bring their investments with them into 46 Detroit neighborhoods they impact. Just to look at that wall of all those projects, 71 projects, a billion dollars in five years. But this is what Detroiters deserve because rents are rising, property values are rising, and we got to make sure the folks who stay don't get pushed out. And that's what a billion dollars in new affordable housing does. Since 2019, 71 affordable housing projects have been built or are under construction in the city. The tug of war over federal student loan debt relief inched a little closer to the borrowers this week. Yeah, the Biden administration unveiled a new plan to eliminate billions of dollars from the total debt load nationwide for those who qualify. It's the president's latest attempt to make good on a campaign promise that's been wrapped up in partisan backlash and legal roadblocks since he took office. We're fixing a broken system. The Biden administration announcing Friday it plans to wipe away another $7.4 billion in student loan debt for around 277,000 borrowers nationwide. We're trying to provide a fair shot to Americans uh, trying to access higher education. Student loan debt relief has been a cornerstone issue for the president since he was elected in 2020. Early in my term, I announced a major plan to provide millions of working families with debt relief for their college student debt. At the time, several GOP-led states sued to block his plan, an effort that the Supreme Court upheld. The initial plan would have wiped away up to $20,000 in debt for millions of qualified recipients. I announced we we're going to pursue alternative paths. That brings us to this week. My administration will propose a new rule to cancel up to $20,000 in runaway interest for any borrower that owes more now than when they started paying the loan. Some debt holders could qualify to have all of their interest cleared under the plan. We're going after those schools that are defrauding our borrowers. For months, the DOE has been working on a new path toward their debt relief goal using a different legal authority granted under the Higher Education Act of 1965. 
There's a required public comment period before the DOE can finalize any new proposals. The White House says if all goes as planned, canceling accrued interest for qualified borrowers could begin as early as this fall, right around election time. In total, President Biden has authorized the cancellation of $153 billion in debt for over 4 million people. That's more than 9% of all outstanding federal student loan debt. Well, business expansion, construction, and jobs, that was the focus of the Michigan Chronicle's Pancakes and Politics event today in downtown Detroit. We streamed the event live on Local 4 Plus. Christy McDonald has more. In full view of the construction here in downtown Detroit, it was all about building and infrastructure today at Pancakes in Politics. I talked to Ryan Maybach from Barton and Mallow about that, and then also we heard about bridge safety of the Ambassador Bridge from Matt Maroon and technology and jobs from Joy Harris at DTE Energy. It was a packed house for Pancakes and Politics, an event 19 years running from the Michigan Chronicle, bringing critical community perspective to growth here in Detroit. Coming off a big milestone this week for the Hudson's Tower next door, Barton and Mallow holding CEO Ryan Maybach. Hudson's, I think, represents so much. Its history, its legacy, uh, and as well its future, an opportunity for, for Detroit. And so being able to celebrate a milestone like lifting the final beam, it's a tradition in our industry, and it was a really great celebration and a uh, big, big milestone for us. The conversation on development, business growth, moderated by Dennis Archer Jr., went into job training, preparing the workforce, and partnering with local businesses. Joy Harris is the president of DTE Energy. Last year, we spent $2.7 billion with, with local Michigan companies. That's how we drive prosperity in our communities, and that's how we fulfill the need to bring on jobs, to also, uh, also keep... Our rate's affordable, let me just say that. Uh, we are using local contractors because they offer us uh, the, the pricing that we need, the support that we need, and things that we know are important to our community partners. And it's the community partnership that Matt Maroon, owner of the Ambassador Bridge, candidly said his company has really tried to work on more. Plus, he addressed safety at the Ambassador Bridge in light of the Key Bridge disaster in Baltimore. There are water threats to bridges and there are also land threats to bridges. And right now, I, I'll tell you, just to be honest, we're going through a top to, top to bottom reevaluation of things. We had a blockade at the bridge just a few years ago, the first time ever in Windsor where the entire bridge was shut down for the better part of a week. There are new threats and we need to respond and take precautions. And this room on the 16th floor of One Campus Martius will be full again next month for another Pancakes and Politics. And you can see it streaming live on Local 4 Plus and click on Detroit.com. From downtown, I'm Christy McDonald, Local 4. It's like a really good conversation, Christy. Thank you. And as Christy said, if you missed it, we're streaming the entire event, our, our after show conversations, as well as interviews tonight on Local 4 Plus at 8 p.m.